My name is Walter Meyer. I'm a, a physician from Galveston, Texas. I am an endocrinologist, a pediatrician, a child psychiatrist, and a psychiatrist. I've been working in the area of sexual behavior uh, since about 1972. Uh, the title of my presentation was Sexual and Psychosexual Development. The focus of my presentation was on the difference between sex and gender and how these two things interact but are not always predictive of each other. Sex refers primarily to the external genitalia and gender refers to what the person thinks they are, whether it be male or female. Now as this particularly becomes relevant in the area of ambiguous genitalia where the parents can't tell what sex the child is and, they had, and so we do a number of medical studies to determine what the internal and external genitalia are like and what caused the abnormality. Uh, based on that information, we might then pick a gender to raise the child. What time has told us is that sometimes our choices are wrong. That if the gender is a, a pick, let's say, a female of a masculinized female infant, and we pick fin the gender of female, some of those females grow up to be males in gender identity. This even happens more when males have ambiguous genitalia and although they're XY, they make testosterone, they sometimes will grow up and not be, uh, uh, not consider themselves as male. So it's very important to keep these two concepts separate and uh, what this has led to is a big controversy about what to do when a child with ambiguous genitalia is born. Uh, whether or not operations should be done in the first year of life to convert the genitalia to the chosen gender that the parents and the physicians choose for the child, or whether that very little surgery should be done until the child gets old enough to choose their own gender. This is a raging debate in the United States and across the world, and I don't think the final answer is in. Certainly what we do know is the majority of children uh, who, were, who, who had their gender determined by their parents and the physician those majority of children are happy with their gender. But there are a certain vocal minority, significant minority, I don't want to play them down at all, who are unhappy and then ask that their gender be reassigned when they become adults. The other thing that's important is that gender and sex do not determine in any way sexual orientation. Sexual orientation is a totally different story about which gender you like uh, when you grow up. And so the, that, that, that's separate from gender and sex and can be uh, all along the spectrum from a very masculine uh, sexual orientation to a very feminine one and anything in between, so-called bisexual. Well, there's no question that most XY individuals are, are male in orientation, both in sexual development and in gender. And in sexual orientation, most males like females. Likewise, most females who are XX uh, will grow up to be uh, happy women in, in the female gender with female external genitalia and a preference for males. But it's the exceptions that I think that this uh, area teaches us something of the, about human beings and teaches us that there are other determinants of gender in sexual development. I think it's very important for us to understand the difference between sex, gender, and sexual orientation. Things get very confused uh, by, uh, by our legislators, and I think they need to keep these concepts separate and not make a decision based on one or the other, but allow people a freedom of choosing their own gender and uh, their own sexual orientation.